Good morning. Good morning. Let's sing rock and roll this morning. We're going to give you up. Yes. 
discouragement or problems in your life and you thought where is God where is he today you need to come see this this is for people that have I mean if, you, if you've had such troubles like losing a loved one or in this case in this movie it's losing a husband and saying where is God I need God and, I, and he's taken everything away from me and how Amy comes back with, that, with her friend's help, with a lot of prayer and loving on and supporting of her friends, Amy comes back to the Lord. Well, that's, that's telling what the end of the... the I'm giving it away. I'm giving away the end. But, but come and see. Uh, God bless the broken road. It's taken from a particular song that uh, I don't remember who it was that wrote it. But do come this afternoon. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. And to give away one more thing, when I watched it the first time, I thought of Janet because there is a place in it where there's a race car driver and there's a lot of racing around a track. So I thought of Janet. <laughs> huh. That could be a high school track beat too. You never know. 
Um, when he was, when we were setting up yesterday and we were sitting there talking afterward, he was telling me about the movie and I found it interesting that in the book that I'm reading right now, the same thing happened for the male lead in the book. He had just lost his wife and was wondering where was God. And I have to get back and read the rest of that so I know how he comes back to the Lord. That'll be pretty exciting, amen? Let's see, what else? Um, Deb's ablation went very well. The doctor was very pleased with the way it turned out. Uh, she'll be a little foggy for a couple of days, so no lifting, no bending. Um, but he thinks it'll be a very good recovery and she will do very well. Obviously, we're thanking the Lord for Pastor Ron and Linda's safe return, their safe travels, uh, good trip. Uh, Anybody else? Who else? Anybody else need prayer this morning? Oh, we're very grateful for Bob. He can now, doesn't have to look at his shoelaces. He can, he can watch the service now. Thank God for the uh, good surgery on your eye. Amen. That's a good thing. Let's hope. Come on, man. What? He can still hear. Yeah. Okay. It'll come. It'll come. We'll trust in the Lord for His His timing. And that's, I guess that's the answer for everything, isn't it? We trust in the Lord for His timing. Not in our impatience that happening right now. Um, Pastor Ron, why don't you come and take the offering today? Thank you, Lord, for you, the blessings that you've given us. We are honored to give back to you to the betterment of our community. Um, please bless this offering and grow it to your use in our, and in the lives of those that we support. Uh, also, to remember the uh, Nazarene building projects this year, this summer, and uh, remember Elijah's family if you have something that you'd like to give special for each of those projects. Amen? Let's say.
love for one like me. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy for one like me. And there's quite enough love and quite enough power to chase away any God male? Interesting question, huh? 
I wrote a research paper about this in February. It's, uh, it seems like an easy question, doesn't it? But it's not. Upon reflection, I thought I saw three possibilities. God could be female, God could be male, or God could be something else. So let's explore that a little bit. Um, in The Good Trade, that's a blog that Emily Torres writes, she says that growing up she was taught that God was male, but she finally realized she could look toward an energy instead of the bearded man of her textbooks. Isn't that interesting? She grew up believing that feminine meant less than. And to be frank, the Bible is written that way. It is male-centric. Men are the dominant force, and most women are second-class citizens. In our day and age, we think that's wrong. We elevate women to the same level as men, and rightfully so. Amen? I should have got a lot of amens on that. Come on. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Um, she discovered what she referred to as the divine feminine and suggests that there are complementary energies existing in everyone, including God. And yes, it's true. God has qualities that we ascribe in our culture more to women than to men. But God is all things to all people all the time. Amen? That's better. So, people don't worship a female god, do they? Of course they do. In Hinduism, in Tantric Buddhism, and in Tantric Hinduism, of course they elevate uh, female gods. Um, Isis is a, is a female god that the, the Hindus uh, follow. Uh, the Greeks had Diana. Uh, they, they all worshipped female gods back then. But uh, I don't necessarily agree. As I read my Bible, every pronoun is male. That's a good thing for me because I'm a male. Jesus was born as a man and we are made in his image. It says so in Genesis 1. Let us make man in our image. That's Genesis 2. Sorry. Genesis 2. Let us make man in our image. In our image let us make them. So we have that to look at. But I have to I have to point out in John 4:24, it says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So that what does that say? Is God male or female? He's a spirit, not not an entity. Let's be frank. God can be anything he wants to be. God can be a man. God can be a woman. God can be the air that is flowing around. Isn't that right? Don't agree? You're allowed to disagree. This is an open forum. I'm giving my opinion here. That's from my research paper. But God is interpreted in Alexandrian philosophy as being beyond, beyond being and therefore unknowable. We only know God from what He tells us, what He allows us to know of Him. And that's a good thing. Woohoo! This is a cool ride. Y'all ought to try it.
So let's revisit the feminine. When I was in, uh, in Denver in December, we got to go to a concert that my daughter sang with her group, a uh, Christmas concert, or just after Christmas, but that was April. Boy, I got my times all wrong. In April, when we went, we saw them sing, and one of the songs they sang was the, the 23rd Psalm. It was written by Bobby McFerrin. Um, you, everybody here knows who Bobby McFerrin is, it, don't you? No? What's that? Heard the name. Heard the name? Um, don't worry, be happy. Now you know who he is. He is much more than that simple little song, that, that quaint little ditty. He is an international musical icon. He's, he does everything from reggae to philharmonic orchestras. He is an exceptional vocalist. He has more than a four octave range, which I can tell you is a whole lot. Most, most singers are doing good to get two octaves, but he can do four. That's really an incredible musician. He, had, he is still attending um, a, an Episcopal church in San Francisco. Uh, the reading that I did on it, it looks similar to the church that my daughter attends in Denver. And I'm going to stop right there and leave everything else alone. I, I should say my daughter is a lesbian. And that's okay. That's her choice. I raised her to be a Christian, and she has chosen this. I still love her. I love her a lot. She's a fine woman with a giving heart and a loving soul, but she chooses that lifestyle. And what are you going to do? She gets to choose. And does God ignore her because of that? I don't think so. He's one of her kids, or she's one of his kids. So of course she, he loves her just as much as anybody else. He loves her way more than I do. But in this, in his song, the 23rd Psalm, all the pronouns are female. She will lead. She restores my soul. She rights my wrongs. She leads me in the path of good things. Glory to be to our mother and daughter and to the holy of holies. Interesting, isn't it? People see the Lord as many different things. And let's go back to the movie The Shack, the book The Shack. God is presented as a black woman. Now, she admittedly, she tells our protagonist that it's because he couldn't understand or accept a strong male person as God. It would have driven him away. But he's not intimidated by the black woman. That's an interesting concept. We can discuss that another time, but the world is full of people pointing God or pointing to God in different directions. My suggestion is that this is the direction we should look first. It is where I go first. You may choose to do something else, and that is your privilege. So a couple of years ago, um, the pastor of my church who was uh, doing a doctoral thesis on the Psalms came in one Sunday morning and presented a sermon that spoke of the 23rd Psalm in every negative way you could ever hope to hear. It was quite amazing. He spoke about this Lord as being a shepherd and yet, he's going, this is a guy who just tells, points me and tells me and t drags me around. and He's just not nice at all. He, 
He, it says, I shall not want, but I'm, I don't have everything I want. I'm, I'm always wanting stuff. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Well, if I lie down in green pastures, I'm going to be below the level at the top of the, the grass, and I won't be able to see predators, and the predators won't see me, but they'll be able to sneak up on me. He leads me beside still waters, and yet they're filled with algae and mold and nasty stuff. And I can't drink the water. He leads me through the valley of shadow of death so that I can be afraid all the time. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies so they can, while I'm busy eating, they can attack me and kill me. Huh. Kind of a negative look on the 23rd Psalm, isn't it? Not good at all. But let's take a different look. It's a Psalm of David. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The literal translation for want is lack, not want. We shall not lack anything we need. And that's what God promises us. He will fulfill all our needs, not all our wants. He's a gentle shepherd. He's not a rough shepherd. He cares about where we are, what we're doing, where we're going. He is guiding and leading and caring for us all the time. Have you felt his presence leading you? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. The literal translation is tender grass, not tall, coarse grass, like you see in some of the fields that are overgrown. This is tender grass, short, easy to eat, good for the stomach. He leads me beside still waters. Again, the literal translation is waters of rest. They're not rushing and raging in, in torrents. They're gently flowing streams, or they're, they're uh, constantly flowing lakes that are exchanging the water, so it's good and tasteful. He leads us with loving care, people. Do you feel his presence? He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He is our rock and our fortress. Verse 31, or Psalm 31, 3 says, For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. He invites God to lead him in this path every day. Isn't that a good thing? That's what we're supposed to do. We're, we pray and we invite God to be a part of our lives every day. Because that's what's important, isn't it? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now the good pastor said that, have you seen those staffs? They've got that long thing and the hook on the end, and he grabs the sheep and drags them around and yanks them about, and that's no good. And that rod, oh my goodness, it's it's got points on the end, one end, and it's got a, a spear on the other for, for stabbing things. That, that makes, fills me with fear. I'm afraid. That's not good. And yet that's not what our scripture says. Psalm 10, or Job 10, 21 and 22 says this. Before I go to my place from which I shall not return, to the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land as dark as darkness itself, as the shadow of death without any order, where even the light is like darkness. And yet what does God say? I am with you always. When you're going through trials and tribulations, when you're sick, badly sick, and in grave peril of death, God is right there. 
Jesus is holding your right hand. That's what our word says. He is there all the time to protect us and to guide us and watch over us. And what, what's the worst that can happen? He can make you well instantly because of his healing touch. Or he can take you home to be with him for eternity. Where's the, where's the downside in either of those? There is none, is there? And speaking of that rod and staff, the rod is for protection of us against the enemy. If we're wearing the shield of faith, it protects us from the arrows of the enemy and God's right, right hand has a mighty sword that cleaves the way that protects us and guides us. Amen. And his rod, it sticks up pretty tall so we can always see it when we're in a crowd. So we know where to go. He will guide us and lead us. Isn't that what we're looking for? Are we looking for guidance for leading? Jesus is there. He's ready and willing. All we have to do is turn to him for that. Amen. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. In Psalm 104, verse 14 and 15, it says this. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man that he may bring forth food from the earth. God providing for us. And wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. They didn't have SPF 50 in those days, so they put oil on their faces to protect them from the elements. You'll remember when Samuel anointed David with oil, when he made him king in his father's house. He used oil and poured it over him. When uh, Mary anointed Jesus, poured the oil over, poured the, the, um, the perfume over his head, she anointed his head and it ran down his beard and all over him. Anointing with oil was the, the way of uh, honoring a person as in life, to build them up, to ascend them. And that's what God does for us. We don't see the oil. We don't feel the oil. But in our spiritual lives, God is pleased with us and loves us and pours the oil on our head. And it's a never-ending cup. My cup runs over. I have more than enough. Always more than enough. When I rely upon the Lord, when I trust Him, when I turn to you. Amen? This was always one of my one of our favorite favorite verses right here, wasn't it? Surely goodness and mercy are going to follow us all our days. Did you catch that? Surely and Marcy. No. It's an old joke. I'm sorry. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dwell in this case means return. So I'm going back to heaven from whence I came. As, as a kid, I always thought God's sitting on the throne and behind him is this big room and it's full of little incubators with uh, souls and angels are running about grabbing one and handing it out and down it goes to be in a new baby that's just been conceived. A childish thought, I know. <laughs> but it was interesting. But God, I came from heaven, just as Jesus came from heaven. You came from heaven, just as Jesus came from heaven. Did you literally come from heaven? No. But at the thought of God, you were created. Just as he created everything we can see here and the entire world and universe. God created it with a thought, just like that. And each one of us 
is fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Two definitions. In my Bible, in the little annotations, it says, till the end of my days. But that's a misnomer. The end of my days are not at all. They go on forever. I know the Lord Jesus is my personal Savior. So I will live forever with him in his house. And you will too if you know the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Precious Lord, we thank you for this word from you today. Fill our hearts with the, the thought that you are always with us. You are ever near us. We can trust you. We have faith in you that you are working out all things in our lives for your name's sake. Not for my goodwill, not for anybody else's goodwill, but for your name's sake. I go through trials because of your name's sake, that I may honor you and lift you up, glorify you before man because of your name's sake. I thank you and I praise you this morning. You are my God. You are worthy of my praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Stand and sing as we close. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Day and every day. Amen? Yeah. You are dismissed.